Hello, this is Troy, Kilo, Foxtrot 7, Sierra Echo Yankee. And today I want to show you a project that I've been working on. Uh, these radios are nothing new. Uh, these Quan Shen uh, UVK5, K6. Um, I, you know, it's kind of been dubbed the uh, most hackable radio uh, ever made or something along those lines. Um, I got mine on Amazon and uh, mine actually says uh uvk6 so but uh, from what i've read uh all of them work uh with the mod you can use either the five or the six with the uh, uh modifications what piqued my interest on this was the ability to uh, put new firmware in it and and basically change the radio's functions to do all sorts of different things and there's several different firmwares out there now uh, but this so uh, the one firmware that particularly caught my eye was one that uh, allowed me to do CW. And there is a few of them out there that have CW, but this one in particular has a built-in keyer. So I could run it with my iambic key. So the firmware I'm using right now is from uh, KD8 CEC. And the version I'm using is 0.3C. And this version allows has CW, which is what I wanted it has a few other features added to it, which which is kind of cool, is Whisper and APRS. And we'll go over uh, how I utilize some of that uh, here in this video. I will be doing kind of a two-part series. One, I'm just going to show you uh, what I've done to my radio. And then two, I want to get out and I'm going to actually use it on a soda activation. You know, a 2-meter, 70-centimeter radio. There's also, like I said, all sorts of firmware to do all sorts of crazy things with it, uh, HF, uh, things like that. I, that didn't interest me at all to uh, have HF in this little radio, as there's so many good uh, HF radios out there now that, um, you know, there's no point in that. Like, there, I've seen videos that had 10 meters. Well, you know, I, I can do 10 meters with my true SDX and 5 watts CW SSB. Uh, so... It, you know, and rel you know, they're relatively the same size. So that didn't really interest me. But what interests me was the ability to have a two meter and 70 centimeter sideband and CW. So, you know, it's a, there's not a lot of activity going on out there for CW on those bands. But I think with this type of radio, we could really develop uh, that you know, interest in it where we're having some summit to summit contacts or uh, maybe you like parks on the air and you go to a park with a friend and you want to learn CW. Well, these these would be great little radios to uh, sit in a park with your ham pal and send CW back and forth on the two meter band or even the 70 centimeter band. You can all, you know, and with, with parks on the air, you know, every contact on band mode all counts. So, you know, with this radio, you could get uh, two meter CW, two meter sideband, two meter FM, and then switch over to 70 centimeters and do, do it again, CW, sideband, FM. Uh, so you'd have, you know, six contacts just with this one little radio. So, uh, to get this thing working, uh, you have to download the firmware and I'm not going to go into details on how to upload the firmware. There are so many videos out there on YouTube for how to do that. Um, one particular one I'll, that I spent a lot of time watching his videos, he goes into a lot of uh, depth and I'll put a link to his channel here, uh, Mike0FXB. And he has quite a few videos on how to upload. So I would suggest going and watch some of those if this is something you wanna jump into. I'm gonna just kinda of go into what uh, I've kind of set mine up to do. So, uh, CW is mostly what I wanted to get this going and you you have to uh, your key you can't just hook up a, a regular key you can but you have to have either uh, interface cable that you're gonna have to make or like in my case I just built it right into my 3d print one of my 3d printed keys I made and I'll put the little diagram here for you to see but what basically uses two resistors on uh, on your DIT and your DAW, a 10K and a 20K. I didn't have a 20K, I used a 22K and uh, it worked fine. Uh, so under CW, uh, once you have it on, you can go in the menu and there is different settings for your CW uh, 
tone, um, uh, the key, iambic A or B, or, or a straight key. You can set it up for a straight key. You can set up your words per minute. And uh, on on his webpage, it says, you, you know, you might have to set some of these uh, here. I didn't have to do any of that. I left it right where the settings were, and it works just fine. And I'm running at 15 words per minute. So I don't know if, you know, if it, if, if you want to run faster, uh, if, if you might have to adjust some of that stuff. Uh, I haven't played with that too much. So you can set your tone. And then uh, the only little trick with this is uh, when you go to key, you have to initiate the transmit, basically. Uh, so, you know, you, you have to hit either a dit or a da to engage the transmitting, and then you can start sending. So that's a little different, but, uh, I mean, it's nothing to get to worry about getting used to. So, you know, you hit it, it goes into transmit. So in the settings, you can set the, the uh, delay uh, once it goes out of transmit. And I think I've got mine set to like uh, 1.2 seconds or something like that. Uh, here it is, 1,200 milliseconds. So yeah, 1.2 seconds. I think it came at two seconds, and I thought that was a little slow. So I, I went to uh, 1.2. That seems to be working all right for me. Uh, so you can also run, you know, like I said, CW. I have it set up right now where I can switch modes with this button here. You can go in CWF, which is basically FM, uh, where it sends the t a tone across FM. So a regular uh, two meter radio will hear that signal. And then uh, CWN, it's basically a practicing mode. So you can, you know, you can practice, you know, all practice and it's not actually transmitting. So that's a nice little feature. And then uh, you got your regular FM mode. AM, which kind of doesn't seem to work that well that I've seen. I haven't really played with it a lot. And then SSB, and SSB seems to work fine. Now, the SSB on this is double, dual sideband, double sideband. Uh, it's not uh, upper or lower. Uh, so, be you know, just know that that's what it is. It does work, though. I've uh, tested it out with my uh, IC705 back and forth. Uh, CW and sidebands and audio sounds really good. CW sounds really good. Uh, the only thing uh, about this is that the the side tone in the radio is a bit loud, I think, but uh, not not too bad to get used to. So it works fine on two meters and seventy centimeters. I've tested it on both of those without any issues and uh, puts out full five watts. Uh, I tested it with my little watt meter I have here. I've also tested with my tiny SA spectrum analyzer and uh, had within, uh, um, it met, met the spectrum purity uh, on both bands. So the other feature that uh, this has that I found um, to be very useful is APRS. And so, it's very basic. It um, works. You can hook uh, the cable up from... One thing you will need is a programming cable to do the pro to upload the firmware. And I just have a regular Bowfang cable that I also got off Amazon. And so I will also put that in the link in the description below. So with that cable, you can actually hook it up to your computer and send stuff from the computer through the radio for APRS messaging. Um, you know, I'm not planning on packing a computer up to a soda summit, uh, but you can do some real basic, um, APRS functions within the radio without having to do that. So under the, uh, so under, so under the V info, you'll have a few different things. My call, and then there's a name, uh, you can put in your grid, your latitude, your longitude, and then, so for sp soda spotting, I, you want to put in under DX call, basically who you're going to send to. And so I put the soda there and then, um, under CW message, you can use the CW messages for APRS as well. So what, what it does is, you know, you have, I think there's nine, um, CW messages and you basically string that together. So, uh, you know, 
for sending my spotting on APRS. I've put in my, uh, basically the string that you put in for APRS. So I've got my soda summit and then my call sign and then frequency and then mode and then message. And so when you do this, you want to make sure you have the spacing all right, because what it's going to do when it sends the APRS message, it's going to pull each one of these together in a string. So once you just, you want to make sure you have all your spaces correctly. So you can see, you know, I have KF714 and then the next one starts four. So it's 144.060, right? CW being the mode and then starting my message and test ignore. So I tested this out this morning and it worked beautifully. It put a test spot up on the soda watch without any issues. So once you have this in your CD, CW messages, you uh, go under uh, APRS, transmit APRS. And so uh, what, what you have to do to get this working is under um, channel, where you save your channels. Let's, let's just get there. Okay, so under channel save, you have to go until you find, you'll see, um, I think I went backwards. So you, you go till you find APRS message and then you have to save the frequency in there that you want to save. So obviously I got the APRS frequency in there. Once you've got that saved, then APRS will work. Oops, I want to exit that. So once you have that set, it will put in the, you'll see the frequency set here under your APRS and you know that it's working. So you just go into the memory here and you switch to CW message. And when you hit the M, it's going to transmit that by APRS. And that will go out over the APRS, APRS frequency and spot you. So that makes it real nice for a quick, easy way to spot for soda. So like I said, here is the uh, website and I'll put the link in the description below for uh, where I got the firmware that I'm using. So KD8CEC and I'm using firmware version 3 point, or 0.3C currently. And uh, from what I've seen, there's a lot of updates com uh, coming out with this thing. And, and in the website, you'll see it goes through a lot of uh, information on how to set things up, uh, how things function, as well as uh, using the software like um, where you can use the programming cable to do stuff uh, with the computer. And down at the bottom, there's the link to where to get the firmware, and it'll take you over to the. Uh, it'll take you over to the GitHub where it's, where the where you can download the uh, firmware. I'm using CECC, uh, which is this one right here, and so I downloaded this one right here and installed it using the uh, uh, software that. Uh, I got from the, I think it was IGV, but I, I followed uh, uh, Mike Zero FXB's uh, videos on how to upload firmware. And so, like I said, there's quite a few different firmwares out there. Uh, this is the one I started with, IJV, which is what I watched on uh, M0 FXB's channel. And there's a lot more information on this website, so I'll put this one in the in the description below too as well, because there there's a lot of information on how to upload. And this is the yeah, so this is the software I use to actually install the firmware on my radio. And then um, you'll see that they recommend that you read you read the calibration and the configuration files off your radio before you do anything. And I did I did do that. Uh, I saved it on my computer, so I have it. And then, uh, you know, you, you just basically hit the right firmware and then uh, select the firmware that you want to upload. And like I said, I did start with uh, this IJV uh, one first and played with it a little bit. And it's really nice. Uh, 
it might be something that you like better. It does have CW, but it does not have an iambic built-in keyer. You would need a separate keyer. Or if you use straight key, this might be the right one for you. I'm looking forward to giving out, getting out and trying this little radio. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to play with. You know, it's small, it's light. Um, if you, you know, you're doing some soda activations on a day that you have a lot of activators out there, you know, I think uh, everybody... If everybody had something like this that, you know, enjoyed using CW or even sideband for that matter, I haven't tested it all that much on sideband yet, but, uh, locally, you know, being in right here with a radio across the room, the audio sounds really, really well. So I don't see why it wouldn't work out in the field, but for $30, you know, I don't think you could go wrong with setting this up. And especially if you want to learn CW, I think this is a great way to get learning on CW if you have somebody that you can uh, operate with. So that's it. I appreciate uh, watching and I look forward to uh, working anybody that might work me on this little radio. Like I said, I will have, uh, this will be part one and I'm going to get out and try activating with this little radio and we'll make a video with that and that'll be part two and hopefully we'll have that here shortly. So 73 and thanks for watching.